This is the axe you saw in the thumbnail and what we'll be modeling today. Let's get into it. So to get started, delete the default cube, add yourself a plane, and then rotate it 90 degrees on the X. Then just extrude out one of the edges and scale up. The goal of this is to create the shape of the blade, and we want it to be pointy and menacing. So the more contrast we get going into the curve, the better. So then we're just gonna scale down and then smooth it out to get a rounded edge. Add some loop cuts, and the reason we're doing this is because I'm gonna use proportional editing to grab the top vertice and then the bottom vertice, and we want to move those inwards on the X and then scale them down a little bit. This is going to add uh, some exaggeration to the point and make it just a little bit more scary. Then we're going to want to get into adding a mirror modifier. And to do that, we're going to select all the vertices on the left side of that line right there. And then we're going to press shift S and then move our cursor to the selected. Then we're going to exit edit mode, right click, set origin, origin to 3D cursor. So then after that, we can add ourselves a mirror modifier and move everything back to the center of the scene. And now we'll add ourselves a solidify modifier and increase the thickness. We don't want to go too thick though, because it is a blade and it's supposed to be sharp. And we're also going to want, uh, want to leave room to add a loop cut that we can scale up and make the blade get that pointed edge. So add the loop cut in between and scale it up just so that we get that nice sharp edge. So it actually looks like it could chop somebody's arm off. And for this next stage, ignore the pink lines you see on the screen. I messed with the subsurf modifier, but didn't end up sticking with it. Use face select and then alt select these uh, loops on the edge here on the top and the bottom. And what we're going to do with these is use alt E to extrude along the normals. And that will give us some little depth. And the reason I'm doing this is to just give it some character and contrast in the design because the plain blade looks a little bit boring. And I'm going to do the exact same thing with these center loops and Alt E extrude along normals. And I think these two changes add a lot of character to the blade. Next, I'm going to add the handle. And to do that, we're gonna use a cylinder with eight vertices, creating an octagon. And then I'll just scale it down so it looks about the size that would hold the ax. Then I'll just scale it upwards so it fits nicely around the blade. Then I'm gonna extrude down a few times. And we're gonna use these loop cuts that I'm creating right now, the little edges in between, to give the handle some curve. So I'm gonna use that loop cut Control B to bevel, and it's gonna give it this nice little wonkiness, which is what I want. And I'm gonna do that on the bottom, and then I will also do it on the top so that we get a nice curve overall. And it kind of goes back and forth, sort of an S curve. Then I'm just gonna reposition it. And then I'll round out the bottom so it's not flat down there. Now I'm going to add some leather straps with these toruses, and then I'm just gonna rotate them, scale them around, and use proportional editing by selecting these loops to uh, wrap it right up against the axe so that it actually looks attached like it should. So I'm just going to do this a few times. I'm going to create sort of this X shape on the top so it looks like the blade is being held in place. And then I'm going to create a couple more so it looks like it's sort of tied off and tied to the actual handle. This is the most tedious part, so it will take a little bit of time, but it will be worth it in the end. Here you'll see me messing around with the grip a little bit by beveling and then extruding along normals. Now. I'm not going to use this in the final product, so if you don't want to do this part, you ignore it. But if you do like the way that these grips look, then go ahead and keep them there. But yeah, just an idea if you wanted to mess around with making something of your own. But yeah, after that, I'm just going to duplicate the top leather pieces and then place them on the bottom so that we have some continuity in the design. Now, if you did add those grips and then you decide you don't like them, here's how you fix it. Obviously, you're going to delete them. And then you're going to go back in between, select the edge loops, and then bridge them together one at a time. Just a quick tip if you decided to do that and didn't like it like I did. Now for the colors, I'm using a material that I came up with previously, and I have a whole vi video on that in the description below. It's two minutes long, but you can add whatever materials you like. So I just decided to go with a sort of a lighter brown and then some blue in the axe because I wanted it to feel something more oceanic, like it was maybe for someone on the beach. And this is the final product. Hopefully you enjoyed and you got what you came for. And if you're interested in learning how to model any other medieval weapons in this style, check out the playlist on my channel. I'll see you guys in the next one.